This video, sponsored by, Skillshare.com. Hey everyone, welcome back to my After Effects tutorial. Today, we are going to create this. Till I get up Time is barely on our side I don't want to waste what's left The storms we chase are leading us And love is all we'll ever trust Yeah, no, I don't So, let's get started Open After Effects and create a new composition I am calling it HUD Audio Spectrum as always, I am using the 1920 by 1080 resolution at 30 frames per second, and my duration is one minute longer. You should use the exact duration of your audio file. Now, the first step is to import your audio into the project. Let's start designing our spectrum. Go to the tools, and select the ellipse tool. Please note, my fill is set to none and my stroke is set to a solid color. I am using white color for it. You are free to choose any color you want. Let's change the stroke value to 75 pixels, to make the stroke thicker. Then click anywhere on the screen, and start creating a circle here. Press Shift, Control, to make it a circle. I am keeping this size for this ellipse. Now grab the Move tool, and align it to the center. Select the shape once again, and we need to place this point into the center. So grab the pen behind tool, by pressing the Y on your keyboard. Then place it into the center. Press and hold the control or command key on your keyboard, it will attach to the center. Cool. Let's rename this layer as time. Then expand the ellipse, then stroke. Now change the line cap to round cap. Now in the dashes, click on this plus button. It will be used to create the dashes. Click once again, to add the gap section as well. Now, we will create the dashes. Change the dash value to 75, and gap value to around 94. Before moving to the next step, let's take a look, at today's sponsor. Thanks to Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community, that offers membership with meaning. With thousands of classes in design, motion graphics, video editing, illustrations, animation, and more. With so much to explore, real projects to create, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. You can check out this animation for graphic designers class on Skillshare, to learn more about animating a logo. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable. Especially when compared to pricey in-person classes. So, click the link in the description, to get two free months of premium membership, and explore your creativity. Let's animate this timer. Click on this add button, and select the trim paths. Open this trim paths option, and we will use the end section for animating the stroke. Make sure you are in the first frame. Then change the end value to 0%. And click here to add a keyframe on it. Now go to the end keyframe, and change the end value to 100%. And this is how it will look now. I think the stroke looks too thick, so I am going to change the stroke value to 60 pixels. Now we need to adjust the dash value. But before, make sure you are at the last frame, where you can see the whole stroke. Now adjust the value of it. Use the up or down arrow key, to change the value more precisely. Cool. This looks good to me. Let's minimize this layer, then make a duplicate of it. I am calling it time background. 
Now open this layer, and first, delete the trim paths from it. Then open ellipse path 1, and then stroke. Now remove the dashes, by clicking on this negative button. We have added the gap section as well, so click on it once again, to remove it completely. Now place it right below the time layer, and then change the opacity value to 30%. I think the stroke looks too small, so I am going to increase the value of it. So, open the contents, then ellipse, and then stroke. Now change the stroke width to around 100 pixels. Let's open the opacity once again, and change the opacity value to 20%. And this looks better. Now, make one more duplicate of it. I am calling it Time Outline. Then select the shape tool, and change the stroke width to around 10 pixels. It will be much easier, than going through all options in layers. Now open scale, and increase the scale value to 140%. Make one more duplicate of it. And I am calling it time outline in. Then open scale, and change the scale value to 60%. Now if you can see, the stroke inside looks thinner than the outside stroke. So I am going to select the time outline layer, and changing the stroke value to 5%. And now it will look much similar. Minimize all layers, to get some room. Now I am going to make them a 3D layer. If your switch tab is not available here, then press F4 to switch between. If your F4 key is busy, in checking my profile on Instagram, then right click here, go to the columns, and choose modes, parent and switches, because we are going to need them. Now click on this cube icon, to make the layers 3D. 3D layer works with the camera, so let's create a new camera. I am going with the default one, and then hit OK. Let's go to around this position, then press C to get the camera tool. Or you can go to the tools, and select the camera tools here. We will use the shortcut key, to quickly switch the tools. Now, drag the mouse, to rotate the camera like this. And this is how it will look now. Cool. But this is not looking better. Let's try to add some depth into the layers. Select the outline layer, and then open its position. Now change the last position value to around negative 16. Click here, to hide the mask visibility. You can keep the position value, according to your needs. Now select the time outline in layer, and then change its last position value to around negative 8. It will create some depth into the layers. Let's add more elements to it. Select the time outline layer, and make a duplicate of it. Then open its position, and change the last position value to 55 pixels. Also, change the scale value to 120%, to get some different size. Now open the ellipse option, and then stroke. Here, add the dashes on this layer. I am going to change the dash value to 0 and the gap value will be 10. Cool. Make one more duplicate, and this time, I am going to place it further below. I am not sure if you can see it on YouTube, but it is a very thin line. I am also changing the scale size of it, to make it a little bigger. Cool. Now I am going to add the audio spectrum, but first, select all layers, and minimize them to get some room. Then create a new solid layer. I am calling it a spectrum. And then hit OK. Then go to the effects and the presets, and search for the audio spectrum. Apply it onto the layer, and first, we need to make a circular mask on it. So go to the tools, and select the ellipse tool. Make sure the spectrum layer is selected, then click on the center, and make a circular mask right here. You can use the Shift plus Control key, to make it perfectly round. Now select the layer once again, 
and press M, to open mask properties. Here change the mask path to none. Now go to the effect controls tab, and change the path to mask 1. Click here to hide the mask visibility, and this is how the spectrum will look now. Now change the end frequency value to 400. And change the audio layer to your music file. It will start reacting with your audio. Let's change the frequency bands value to 150. As well as, I am going to change the side options. You are free to choose any sides you want. But I am going with the side B. Also, let's change the color to the white, for outside, and inside. Make sure to keep the softness value to 0%, for making the lines hard. At some points, the audio spectrum is not looking smooth, so let's fix it. Go to the effects and the presets, and search for the mirror. Apply it right below the audio spectrum, and change the first reflection value to 960. Or you can divide the value by 2. It will align to the center perfectly. Cool. Let's make the spectrum 3D as well. Click on this cube icon, to make it 3D. Then open position, and change the last position value to 100 pixels. It will change the Z position of the layer. This looks good, but not that attractive. Let's add some depth of field to it. Open camera layer, then the camera option. Here, turn on the depth of field option. Now change the aperture value to 300 pixels. As well as blur level to 300%. Now we will use the focus distance, to keep a certain part in focus. Let's keep this part in focus. If you think the blur is too much, you can always decrease the aperture value. Now I am going to add the timer on it. So go to the tools, and select the text tool. Click anywhere on the screen, and let's type some text here. Eject from the typing tool, and then increase the text size to 110 pixels. Also, I am changing the kerning value to 10. By the way, you can download this font from the link in the description. Place the text right here, and then align horizontally into the center. Cool. Now I am going to add a little expression on it. So select the text layer first, then go to the effects and presets. Here open the expression controls. Grab this slider controls, and place it onto the text layer. Now open text layer. Then text, source text. Here I am going to add the expression on the source text. So press and hold the alt, or option key on your keyboard, then click on this stopwatch icon, to add an expression. After that, grab this pick whip, and simply drop it onto the slider control. Click anywhere on the screen, to eject from the expression box. And now this number will be controlled by the slider. Let's quickly add the number here. Make sure you are at the first frame, then add a keyframe on the slider. Now go to the last frame position, and change the slider value to 100. It will change the number from 0 to 100. But there is a problem. It is showing these random numbers after the dot. But we can fix it very quickly. Simply, click on the expression box, and here add math, with capital M. Dot round. Then open bracket. Now go to the end position, and close the bracket. Make sure to enter the script as I have typed. Else it won't work. And the problem has been fixed now. Cool. Let's grab the text tool once again, and now I am going to add the percent word. Simply, type it onto the screen. Let's use the font size of 14, and the kerning value of 200. Align it right below the text number. And let's change the text size to 18 pixels. And this is looking better now. I think I need to change the position of the text layers. So select both text layers, and place them right here. So that I can see the text clearly. Cool. Check the animation, 
and see if you like it. Let's create a background for it. So create a new solid layer. I am going to call it BG, or background. Place it below all layers. Then go to the effects and the presets, and search for the 4 color gradient. Apply it onto the layer, and change the first color to this dark blue color. Also, I am keeping the second color to a red one. For the third and fourth colors, I am keeping the black color. Now grab these points, and align them to get a nice combination. This looks better now. I don't want the background to appear on the whole frame. So let's select it, then go to the tools, and select the rectangle tool. Create a mask at this position, and then press F, to open feather. Change the feather value to 400, and now the background will appear in this bottom section only. Cool. Now for the final step, I am going to add the rotation in all elements. This is also very simple. So let's create a new null object. I am calling it control. Make sure to make it 3D layer as well. Then open rotation, here I am going to use the Z rotation, for rotating this null object. For adding a rotation, it will be much easier, if we add an expression on it. So again, press Alt, or Option key on your keyboard, then click on this stopwatch icon, to add an expression. In this expression box, type time, star, 30. Click anywhere on the screen, to eject from the expression box. Now select all layers, except background, text layer, camera, and the top text layer. Then grab this pick whip, and place it onto the control layer. All elements will connect with this control, and they will start rotating. If you think the rotation is too much, you can simply change the expression number, to a lower one. And now we are done. Thank you for watching this tutorial, I will see you in the next one. Till then, good luck, and peace.